All right, welcome to this edition of the Justice Team Podcast, and we're very, very blessed to have some bad faith and barbecue action coming into us from Kansas City, <laughs> and we have the partners in law and love, Tom and Chelsea Dickerson. Thanks Hello. so much for having us. Excited yeah. to be here. So um, their practice incorporates both Missouri and Kansas. You guys do both? Missouri yes, absolutely. Kansas. Yes. Nice. Mm-hmm. Um, so I assume that um, Chelsea's the real lawyer and Tom's just the... Uh, that's right. The mouthpiece. That's right. He helps shit. me. Yep. Mm-hmm. Just along yep. for the ride. I'm the, I'm the pretty face. Like pretty face. <laughs> you know, we, we've seen some great success come out. You know, you know, big verdicts that are. You had a you know big retrial that came over five million in Kansas, which is very hard to do. Yes, it is. Uh, yes, it is. I call that my Phoenix case now because you know we were litigating it for seven years and. We, uh, we went out in the middle of Kansas and we tried it and lost it. And we had problems with the judge, judges, you know, it was, it was problematic. And then we had problems with the jury and, uh, you know, the appellate court said we got a new trial. And so we, uh, we refiled it in Kansas city and then retried the, did the whole thing all over again. And then we got four and a half million dollar verdict and we get attorney's fees. Well, so look at that. Should look be six. That. When woo, it's all woo. Yeah. Yeah. So Tom and Chelsea's firm, they, Headquartered in Kansas City, right? But, yes, indeed. Uh, you guys do a lot of, you know, personal injury, but also the insurance litigation, bad faith. Yes. Absolutely. 100%. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. So we're going to concentrate this episode on um, helpful tips for all the lawyers and law students listening of kind of bad faith. And more importantly, a lot of these people that are doing litigation cases, how to get more than the policy limit by the insurer. California, we have one of the worst. It's 15000 per person. It's the least amount of limit. Um so first of all, what are some practical tips? And I'll start with you, Chelsea, as you're working up the file and you see what's, what's the minimum policy that you have in Missouri? Yeah, it's a little bit higher, surprisingly, yeah. from Missouri and Kansas versus uh, California, but it's 25,000 is the state minimum for both. And um, you know what we try to do, I will say when we were young lawyers, we were just excited to get a policy limit. Mm-hmm. That seemed so great. But um, no, it's, it's very important to be able to identify those cases that come through where you can work them up and get more than the policy limit and know that that's the goal. The goal is not to get the policy limit on a facet injury case, for example, mm-hmm. or a herniated disc. That's not what you're trying to do. So initially, um, you have to work up the injuries. You have to get them to the right specialist, do all that. You also have to make sure that when you're sending the demand, you are making it crystal clear to the insurance company from a later perspective that they should have paid it but maybe holding back just a little bit of information mm-hmm. because some of those adjusters, they don't know what they're doing. I say some, that's gracious. Um, so just being able to recognize that and saying, okay, well, yeah, I am gonna give all the medical and billing records, but I'm just gonna give them just enough information in that letter to say, hey, this is a, a herniated disc case, give us the policy limits, thanks, bye. And if they don't do their job, which they usually won't do, yeah. then you're off to the races. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And in California, like you have to give their certain criteria. It's like, now it's like you have to give 30 days. This has to be reasonable. Just essentially it has to be like, what's reasonable, give as enough information as you have. If you have the medical records, turn it over. If you have the police report, turn it over. Um, just those kind of like little criteria. But I would always think what you said, you have to look backwards. So like, absolutely. So what do you mean by that? Right, so later on, if you get through your bad faith case, they're going to look back in time to what information the adjuster had Mm -hmm. when they had the settlement opportunity package. I made the boo-boo of calling it a demand. That's what most people know it Mm -hmm. as, but it's a settlement opportunity letter. There you go, okay? Running with the bulls. Absolutely, it's a settlement opportunity, but that truly is what it is to the insurance company. You are being gracious to them and saying, look how reasonable Mm -hmm. we are. And later on, when the court looks at the bad faith case and says, well, should they have paid this? Yes, that's we've given them all the medical records. We've given them all the bills. It's just enough information to show later on that they definitely should have paid that limit, i.e. it is bad faith that they did not at that point in time. And what are what are some of those like I know Tom and I spoke on spine injuries before, you know, the spinal ones. And I, you mentioned facets, Chelsea. So mm-hmm. what are the injuries those that tend to open up policies more often than not? I, you know, I think that, 
whenever we get imaging in a case, that's a big moment because you'll get a report and you'll see exactly what's going on, for instance, on a spine case. So there's more spine cases than anything else. And there's more opportunities, I think, to get more than the policy limit on spine cases. Agree 100%. Than, than any, yep. any other type of case. Mm -hmm. But what will happen is you'll get that MRI and you'll see, uh, for instance, there might be a disc protrusion that's pressing on a nerve or something like that. That 100% is not only a policy in my case, but it's worth far in excess of that. I mean, Bob's fir Bob and his firm have, have, I mean, the proof's in the pudding. They have these massive spine injury verdicts. And I tell you what, even in conservative places, we've gotten those verdicts. Mm -hmm. So they're worth a ton of money once you work them up. But what you need to do is you need to take a look at that imaging study and say, okay, is this something more serious? And there's really a, it's an interesting time because most insurance companies have actually shifted over to uh, computer programs to evaluate cases. And the computer programs aren't, I think, appropriately taking into account how serious these cases are. And so our, what we do is we try to give the insurance company just enough to show them in terms of the evaluation that they should be paying. And it's not your job to give them you know, every single document, what you're supposed to do is just give them a fair opportunity to settle. So in a lot of our cases, we'll simply send off the medical records off and say, hey, look, you know, here's our, a herniated disc case, you need to pay the limit. And then they come back and, you know, they'll ask for X, Y, Z thing. And, and sometimes we'll give it to them, but sometimes we won't. If it's a very clear, clear, clear cut case, we'll just say, no, you need to pay the limit and we've provided you enough information. Because I come from a family of uh, insurance folks. You know, my father was an adjuster. My mother was an adjuster. My sister is currently an insurance adjuster. And they know the cases that they're supposed to pay on. So the, the key is just giving them a fair opportunity to settle. But you need to recognize when that imaging comes back, you know, listen to your client. I'm still in pain. Mm -hmm. Correlate that with the imaging study and what you're seeing in the medical records. Because you'll know if this is anything that's permanent, it's going to be worth more than the policy limit. Period. Yeah, and those 20000 25000 50000 even $100,000 policy limits, I find, I think of these spine cases, if you have recommendation for future care and a positive Absolutely. MRI and they don't yeah. take it seriously, it opens it up. You know, but when you talk about that imaging, Tom, and, you know, the programs that the other side uses is they just don't compute the pain levels associated with, you know, when you look at it and it mm -hmm. says like facet orthopathy or like formal, like foraminal stenosis, like yep. the computer, unless it sees words like impingement and huge acute herniation, it just right. doesn't compute. It yeah. does not. No, no. And, and even in those cases where it actually does flag it, it often isn't giving the appropriate amount of, you know, money for pain, suffering, mental anguish, those types of things that a jury would. There's, there's just this massive gap in terms of valuation between what a jury does with those things and what the computer systems do. And, and the insurance companies have had to shift to these things because they think it, it saves them a ton of money and it makes them a whole lot more efficient. But the truth is what it really does is it opens them up to a whole bunch of bad faith because there's not an actual skilled adjuster that knows how to evaluate a case like a lawyer would that's actually taking a look at it. The, the adjusters are basically, their hands are tied and they can't give appropriate values to what these things are actually worth. So the human element has really been taken out of it. And that's why it's the best time in the world for these cases, because the adjusters don't have the ability to pay what they should be paying on right. the case mm. to protect their insureds. And they're trained like robots and they never they never account enough for general damages and pain and suffering. And that's one thing that I think yeah. When you have, when you talk about giving them enough information, like I never put a lot of all of the human loss story to it on these smaller no. policies because it should just be a given. It yeah. absolutely should, yeah. absolutely. Um, you know, and, and also in well, in California, I know they can't take into consideration like liability disputes. If you're wrong later and there's a verdict and you're insured is at fault, mm -hmm. then it's presumed that that's you should have known that at the time the demand was made too. So sometimes it's easy on a liability case. To, right. to open policies too. Mm -hmm. right. If they're wrong, they're wrong. Absolutely. Yeah. And, when, and what do you do when those insurance adjusters write back to Chelsea and they say, all right, we got your stuff. Can you give us another two weeks? Yeah, so the extension game. Oh, um, I we have really stopped giving extensions. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I just think if it's clear that they should pay, Tom kind of mentioned it earlier, they should pay. They should On clear ones. What if it's Unclear like, ones. what if it's like yeah. a wobbler? If it's a wobbler, I, I will give two weeks, but mm -hmm. there's there are definitely adjusters out there who will play the game of extension after mm -hmm. extension oh, yeah. after extension. 
And at some point, you've just got to put your foot down because they'll do that so into perpetuity. Are you? So. Are, are, is this something you're doing over the phone with them and how over in writing? Like, what is this game? How does it look like? I, you know, I try to keep a lot of things in writing, yep. and and there's a definite reason for that. I and mean, what is that reason? Well, later on, there's going to be evidence in the case, especially in a bad faith scenario. They're going to be looking at every single letter and. Sometimes, Bob, I'm sure you've seen this when you get claim notes back, you had a conversation with a gesture that's just not fairly reflected in the notes or mm -hmm. maybe something was said. And also yeah. think about it, they're making their own note. There's a lot of CYA, CYA situations that go on. So if you have a documented letter, it's just like with opposing counsel following up saying, hey, we talked about X, Y, Z yep. today. I have that later. It's my evidence in the case later, and it's very clear. Yeah, it's like what you said, Bob. It's about forward thinking. It's about thinking where you want to end up. So when you send these letters, you should be thinking to yourselves, okay, if I get my excess verdict and I'm down the line, mm -hmm. and now I'm in a actual, I'm in front of a, like on a jury or a judge on my bad faith case, here's the evidence that I want to prove that we gave them a fair opportunity to settle and that they messed it up. All of that stuff that you're doing as you're doing it can be evidence later. And so you want to make sure that it's all documented real well. And, and documented kindly. Oh, yes. 100%. That's true, too. Right. 100%. Right. Because you don't want to be in that situation later where a jury's looking at it and they're like, yeah, you were really mean to that insurance company. Yeah. Did you really give them a fair opportunity? So, I mean, when it comes to extensions, I, you know, I think that the the best thing to do is if you if it's a really clear cut case there's probably not a reason for it but they may have a good reason like i've had cases sometimes where the adjuster says i'm sorry and this is just true i'm sorry i have 300 files like yeah. i just can't get to your demand in time can i have two weeks and in that case is you know i'll say yes and you'll document it and then you look like the nice guy when it when right. it comes down to uh having the evidence reviewed later yeah i think again it's going back to reasonableness right were yes. we being reasonable That's right. and absolutely you want to come across kindly um i i just get really sick of the games where they try to ask for too many extensions so i think it's having that balance, that balance. There. yeah, yeah. I was, we write a letter an email like a jury's going to read it later exactly That's right right 100 percent. Right. Exactly. I, I just talk like i was like look my client just they need the surgery can you please just give them the money because they're going to pay right. for the surgery just they don't want to play games so everyone wants to walk away right. you know what the case is worth a lot more that's just right let it be done now before we yep. want to get this get ugly. Because you're gonna read it and jury's like, well, that was really reasonable. You he know? was yep. being so kind. Well, why didn't they do it? Yeah. You know? And you know, there's sometimes too that there's a good reason why you wouldn't give every single piece of information. Like for instance, like you might have a case where it's a fifteen thousand dollar policy and your client really does need a fusion surgery. And so you you don't want to go hire an expert. And then oh, no. yeah, hire yeah. a life care planner and do all that because that's going to deplete the recovery. Yeah, you Why make the you demand ever... when the value of it is there for, for them to pay it. Right? Exactly. Right. And sometimes it's just the police report and the emergency room record might be enough. It's like, look, this person had arms, had wrist surgery. Right. You have a 15 policy. Here's all you need. And when they write back, like Chelsea says, we need an extension. Can you send them medical bills? It's like, what, what does this have that to do with anything? Nothing yep. to do with anything. <laughs> yep. Adjusters love medical oh, bills. Yeah. They want to fight with you on the medical bills. And that is just the sign of, oh, they're going down that track yep. again of not focusing on what matters in the case. That's yeah. another uh, kind of bad faith topic that's come up lately is a lot of the insurance company companies will take medical bills and they'll use their computer systems to arbitrarily reduce the oh, bills. Gosh. It could be down to Medicare rates. It could be down even lower than that. They can basically adjust them however they want to in terms of their evaluation. But the truth of the matter is in most jurisdictions, your measure of damage is what the bills actually are, or at least what has been paid. Like yeah. in, in Kansas and Missouri, the, the judges let in all that evidence, the bill, the paid, the adjustments, yep. like all that yeah. stuff. But you might have a case where there's $50,000 in actual paid medical, and then you have the insurance company say, oh no, the reasonable value of med that medical is actually more like 30. And it's like, well, hold on a second. My client yeah. has actually paid this. These, you this tell is me insurance real carriers damages. are paying more than the value? Is that what you're saying? That's <laughs> stupid. Yeah, I mean, so, you know, I know we're out of time. You guys are pressed when you're your transit in and out of Los Angeles here in Kansas City. <laughs> so how do people get a hold of you guys? Well, we have a wonderful website we're very proud of and uh, we're revamping it a little bit here. That's part of our, our uh, quest here in LA and what we're doing. But um, yeah, our website, we're on Instagram. We are on, 
We have Facebook. Um, yeah. yeah. MySpace. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. DickersonOxton.com. DickersonOxton.com. Oxton. It's O-X-T-O-N. DickersonOxton.com. And then um, you, always, I'm like an open book. Anybody can call me at any time. My cell is 785-691-7047. Mm-hmm. Love to talk about bad face stuff. So yep, always absolutely. give me a call. Very good. Well, Tom and Chelsea, thanks for coming on. If you have any questions, go to justiceteamnetwork.com. Click that button and we will get back. We thank you guys for coming in. Thanks, thank you. Mom. Thanks for having us.